so check this out. I made the entirety of Copernicus Crater in Unreal Engine. This is a huge crater on the moon, the favorite of many because it has these huge mountains in the middle of the crater, which is where we are right now. That's my car called Blackbird. And what's really fun is I can like push my car off this hill. And <laughs> as we chase my car, we can start to get a sense of how ridiculously enormous this crater is. Because as we follow it, the background isn't moving. It's just kind of mostly stationary. Just like looking out on a ridiculously vast landscape on Earth. Look at this. Wow. You can tell the scale of this thing by the how little it moves and how, how little it parallaxes as you move across it. And as my car goes down the hill here, you can get a sense of how much time it actually will take until it splats on the crater floor. Good thing is I have space insurance. <laughs> Who invited that So I'm just gonna like stand here until we see it go off the rim there. I mean, and now it's honestly probably more than a mile away. Oh, I've lost all sight of it. So it's probably gonna be a couple more minutes <laughs> until it hits the crater floor. But this just gives you a sense of how ridiculously enormous this crater is. One of the weird things about being on the moon is that you don't get a sense of how far away things are because there's no haze. Like if I add a atmosphere into this landscape, all of a sudden you can see how much haze would fill it if it was on Earth. But of course, it isn't, which gives you no sense of depth or scale of how far away things are from one another. And this entire landscape is completely traversable. Let me go ahead and zoom out on it. So all every little corner of this landscape can be explored on the ground, on foot, in a car, whatever. And as I kind of fly up here, you can see the crater rim is very detailed and absolutely fascinating. And there's actual color from the real moon splattered around here. So for instance, this crater over here is much brighter than this surrounding crater. So that gives you a sense that it's newer. More on those kinds of details in other videos. And what I can also do is change the lighting direction in real time. So I can go ahead and just pitch the light around and you can get a sense of what a lunar sunset would look like or how lunar noon is just so ridiculously bright, especially when you combine that with this effect over here, which you can kind of see as I move the camera around. Do you see that sort of halo? I'll increase the contrast to make sure you can see it. That's something that actually happens on the moon. And what it, what it does is it basically makes the side that's opposite the sun, so like the sun is up there right now, if the side that is opposite the sun will look way brighter and the side that's kind of in the same direction as the sun is way darker. This is because all of the particles in the lunar soil scatter the light that comes in kind of preferentially. So you, you see it in one kind of concentrated spot way more than in the opposite direction. And something you might also have noticed is if I really increase the camera speed here, you can notice that the whole landscape is curved. There's, there's a curvature to it. And that is true to life, the curvature of the moon, which is about 27% the Earth's radius. So you see the curvature of the moon way more prominently than you do on Earth even at a pretty low altitude. And the cool thing about this landscape is it isn't just the one-off. I can rebuild any corner of the moon in the Unreal Engine in about a minute or two. Let me show you how that works. It starts in this Jupyter Notebook here, which is basically a way to write Python code. Let's first of all go ahead and pick a spot on the moon. So I've got this sweet USGS geological map of the moon from 2020 that I'm just gonna go ahead and find something cool on and then we'll look at it in Unreal. Right over here in Mare Cognitum, there's all these crazy rill features. And I'd love to see what those look like up close. Maybe in Mare Nubium, right in here. I think this is where we're gonna go. First step is I need to get the coordinates of this. So I'm gonna actually just use this map. So we'll center here on this, this crater called Patatus, Potatus, Pota Potato, Potato. <laughs> and we'll find it that kid. then we'll make sort of a circle or actually a square. Maybe we'll do about 15 degrees of longitude. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of skip all this and, and create a new line here for the latitude longitude that we just found, negative 30 degrees 
north or in latitude, it was negative 15 degrees in longitude. This is the radius of the moon and we'll do about 15 degrees from west to east. I'm gonna import the highest resolution that science has ever gathered of the moon in altitude. So this is basically an altitude map of the moon. And this is a color map of the moon, which is pretty high resolution, but not super ultra high resolution. And once that's done, we should be able to take in that data and then reproject it into an orthographic view of the moon, which takes a couple of seconds. This does it for the altitudes and this does it for the color data. And then in here, we can get a quick preview of what it looks like, just to make sure that we're looking at the right area. Yep, that looks like about right. That's pretty much exactly what I was looking for on the map. This is gonna be very cool because there's these huge blast rays from the Tycho Crater impact, but we'll see what that looks like in a second. And then we just run a couple more cells and then create a file to save it to. It reported that it's gonna be about 400 kilometers across. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this Nubium 400 kilometers. So I go ahead and save that. And then in here, we're gonna get three numbers which are gonna come in handy really helpful in a second. Now back in Unreal, I'm gonna make a new level. Make it just a normal level. It also works for uh, open world stuff, but uh, you know I don't really wanna show that right now. It's not that big of a landscape. And so I'll select the uh, data file and there it is you can see the curvature of the moon baked into it And then we're gonna go back here and change the scale to match these three numbers So the X and Y scale is gonna be the same number about 9700 and the Z scale is gonna be 6402 and so this puts the landscape in its true scale pixel for pixel meter for meter Which is super exciting because then you can go and traverse it as if it was real life if we hit import takes a minute or two, depending on the speed of your computer. And voila, you have a landscape. It just kind of looks like a big gray square with some prickly edges. So if I add a, a lighting source here, directional light, you can start to see a very dramatic landscape. That is honestly super, super cool. But the lighting isn't quite right yet. So what we actually have to do is come back to select mode and change the material because if I zoom in on this material right now you can see that it's just a big checkerboard which is uh, not what the moon looks like. I'm gonna go here to landscape material create a material instance and then I'm gonna parent that to the master material and then I'm gonna import that texture that we exported of the color information about this particular area on the moon and I'm gonna drag and drop it into the macro texture. So now if I save this and swap over here and change the lighting ever so slightly. Aha, we can start to reveal Mare Nubium. Oh, but <laughs> there's a very obvious issue. If I fly into the surface here, you can see the entirety of that, that color map kind of just tiling thousands of times. And that's not what we want. So I'm gonna change the macro resolution of this to 4033 which is how big that texture is. And now we have the true information, the true color of the moon. I'm gonna brighten it up a bit because the moon is a dark place. And that is the exact area on the moon that I pointed my finger at on that map about two or three minutes ago. Super cool. What the heck is this? Look at this crater. It's like a double crater. That is legitimately awesome. And I'm curious, how big is that? Like, if I zoom in here and I, I slow the camera down, I can drop in stuff for scale. So for instance, my primary scale reference is my car, as, as always. So if I zoom in here, you can get a sense of how ridiculously huge this double crater is. I mean, that is, that is outrageous. How did that even happen? <laughs> I have some, some planetary geology friends that I think I need to consult about this ridiculous crater. Let's see what it looks like to push the car down this hill. All right, here we go. Come on, Blackbird, you can do this. I want you to go down the hill. Off you go. Off you go. Bye-bye. Oh man, and as I walk here, you know, it is kind of hard to tell a sense of scale because the floor is just kind of blank there's almost no detail up and close so i made a lot of tools in order to make that look better as well so if we go back to that material 
I can change the micro texture so that it, it doesn't look as trash. <laughs> and 2000. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now we've got some good surface detail. Let's try that again. <laughs> Off you go, Blackbird. Wee. And the car's kind of floating because this landscape's collision mesh is a little bit coarse. And off it goes into the ridiculously huge crater. Like, I wonder how long it would take to drive across this thing, or in a, even in a circle around it. So cool. But, like, there's just infinite fun with this because I could, you know, zoom out here. And instead of looking at that, like, look at this. What is this? I think that this is one of those rills I was looking at. So, you know, how far is it from end to end of one of these? I'll stick uh, Blackbird in there for scale, slow the camera down. And then now, oh my gosh, so like this rill is deep and wide. This is like a full on valley. This isn't no like little scratch in the lunar surface. I mean, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's super interesting. And I mean, the fun doesn't even stop there because of course we have the, the surface detail just, just from the texture, but I could also go ahead and like add rocks, like actual moon rocks. NASA did some, some scans of the, the rocks brought back by Apollo 11 through 17. And they have these ridiculously beautiful and high poly uh, models. Like, look at this thing. This thing is 200,000 triangles and a super high resolution texture to go with it. So pretty, pretty beautiful. So I turned these into a bunch of foliage assets. So instead of like scattering trees around, you can scatter moon rocks. So I'll just go ahead and try and paint some moon rocks. Of course, that looks ridiculous, but I could play around with that. I can make it look a little bit more randomly interspersed. And in fact, that's what I did for the Apollo 11 landing site. I basically recreated the whole thing based on images. And that's another video for another time. But anyway, thanks for checking this out. This is the way that I'm going to be making a lot of the visuals and explanations in the Planet series that I'm writing right now. And in the short term, I'd like to turn this into an Unreal Editor built-in plugin that's free and open source. But for now, it's only available for patrons on my Patreon. Once we get to about a thousand patrons, then I'll start to be able to do this full time and maintain it to make sure it works for everyone. And in the long term, what I'd really like to do is build a kind of like Microsoft flight simulator type thing where you can fly around to anywhere in the solar system to any planet or moon and you get the highest possible quality detail. Look at these cracks, dude. These cracks are super in Are these cracks? Or are they, are they lava flow? Like, like rills, are these, are these like rivers of ancient lava flow? Lava tubes, or are these cracks? I don't know the answer. If you know the answer, let me know in the comments. This crater is, it's called Pitatus. Pitatus, Potatus? Anyway, if you enjoyed this, please, uh, you know, hit a like, hit a subscribe, whatever you like to do. And until the next time, I'll see you in the universe.